When we talk about being believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this idea of faith is not supposed to be something peculiar to us. It's supposed to be a normal operation in the life of anyone who claims that they are a believer. Notice what, what I just said. You are called a believer. You're called that because you're supposed to believe. So that means that this idea of faith is supposed to be a normal reality in my everyday life. Faith in the life of a believer is not supposed to be hit and miss. It's supposed to be this consistent reality by which I live my life. And so faith is supposed to be normal in the life of a believer. Faith is our very identity. It is who we are. And based upon who we are, we act out of who we be. Now, I know that's not proper English, but it comes across a whole lot better. Based on who I am, it determines who I be in my behaviors, in my functions, in how I approach situations and circumstances in life. And so faith is the very identity of the believer. Thus, we are called a people of faith. We are those who caught a glimpse of the faithfulness of God. And because we caught a glimpse of the faithfulness of God, now because we believe in his faithfulness, we walk in a unwavering faith. And so the word of God requires or it speaks to us as being this nation of faith. Um, those who walk by faith, all because we got a glimpse of the faithfulness of the Father through Jesus Christ. And we dare to believe and base our life on him. Okay, when we talk about this idea of faith, um, the believer trusts in the nature and in the word of God. Faith now, because it's unwavering and it is sound in the fact that it believes in God, it causes the believer to trust without doubt. Watch these two elements again, the nature and the word of God. When I say that I am a person of faith, I've moved to a point where I trust his nature. When we talk about the nature of God, the attributes that make him up, I know that God is a loving God. I know that God is a man who cannot lie. I know that God is all powerful. I, I know that God is watching over his word to perform the very thing that he said. Okay, so I understand all of these different attributes about God, which causes me to trust his nature. Everybody say that with me. God, I trust your nature. Okay, now, when we talk about trusting the nature of God, you'll understand it a lot better if I put it this way. I gave you all this example in, in a few teachings over the years. If a dog that you don't know comes up, the normal... Reaction is caution. But if a cat comes up that you don't know, there's not normally a response of caution. Because the nature of a dog is to bite. The nature of a cat is something totally different. So based on the nature of the thing, I begin to respond to it based upon my understanding of its nature. Now, the person of faith has an understanding of the nature of God that makes them say, I know that he's an all-loving God. Yes. Yes. They, they, they understand that he's a forgiving God. They understand that he's a God that moves in grace even when I don't deserve it. That they understand that he is the God of all power and all might and no darkness, no evil, no plan of the devil can overcome his plan. You understand the very nature of God. So the person of faith, based upon that nature, they begin to move based upon their understanding in faith of the nature of God. But I also said to you that the person of faith doesn't just understand and trust the nature of God. They also trust the word of God. The things that he says, they understand that they can put their weight on it. Jesus Christ said this in his encounter with Satan. He said that man must live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus was saying to Satan that despite whatever you say, I understand that what he says is what matters. 
No, I'm going to hit the rewind because some of y'all missed that. Jesus was saying, if I, in, 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 if I was to modernize it, that despite everything that you say to me in this moment of tempting, I understand that only what he says matters. My life is predicated on the authority of the Father. My life is predicated on the authority of what he says. Now, all of that is an introduction to get you to these verses that we need to walk through on today. Um, if you will write in your notes, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. There you find these words that says, So faith cometh from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ or the word of God. Now, now watch what the writer writes for us. He helps us to understand a principle of faith in this particular verse. He says that faith has the ability to come. Okay, so anyone that, that is questioning their level of faith. We talked about the levels of faith um, on, on Tuesday in our conference call Bible study. We talked about the levels of faith. If I honestly evaluate my level of faith and find that my level of faith is lower than what it should be or what I desire it to be, the writer is letting me know that there is a way for your faith to increase. That there's a way for more faith to come into your life. And he says that faith comes from hearing. That, that, that if I'm going to have increased faith in my life, that I, I, I've got to understand that faith comes from hearing. It's right here that the writer um, is saying something that most of us miss when we hear this particular verse. When he says that faith comes from hearing, he's talking about the ear of your heart, not the ear on your head. I'm going to say that again. In order for you to get the revelation of this verse, you have to understand that he's talking about the ear of your heart, not the ear on your head. The ear on your head hears something, but it doesn't mean that it receives it. And so there's a hearing that takes place within your heart and in your spirit that causes faith to come. If you don't hear with your heart and you only hear with your mind, it will not lead to faith. It only leads to information. That's why you've got so many people in the body of Christ that can spew out scriptures and, and spew out stuff that they learn with the wino or, or the person that's strung out on drugs. Um, you go to them and you try to testify to them about the Lord. They tell you, well, I know about that. <laughs> I learned that when I, was, I, when I was in church with my mama. And you've got some winos and some people who are not living their life for God that know more word than people who are in the church trying to live their life for God. It is a result of them obtaining information. But the information they heard with their ear that went into their mind, they never heard with the ear of their heart. And so one of the things that we have to ask God as believers is, God, open the ear of my heart. God, help me to hear with my inner man, not, just, just, not with just the man of this natural mind. The writer says that, that faith comes from hearing with the ear of your heart and hearing through the word of God. So watch what he says. That there's a faith that comes through your ability to hear with the ear of your heart. But what you hear has to be the word of God. I can't just hear anything and it produce faith in my life. I've got to hear the word of God right there. The word of God has to do with rhema. And that means a spoken word that comes from Christ. Rewind, that means a spoken word that came from Christ. And so, whether I heard the spoken word that came from Christ through the Holy Ghost, or whether I hear the spoken word that came from Christ through somebody being used of God, or whether I hear the spoken word um, that came from Christ through reading the Logos, the written word of God, the key is that my inner ear has to hear a word. Just come from God. So, how well do you do as modern day position, as modern day believers, in positioning yourself in postures that give you an opportunity to hear the rainbow 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are you consistent at daily having a devotional life where you read the word of God, where you spend time with the Holy Spirit so that you have an opportunity to hear a word from Jesus Christ that can stimulate and build your faith to the next level? Okay, uh, and so the writer helps us understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Next verse I want you to write down is Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. And in Hebrews 11, verse 1, it reads this way. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the confidence of things not seen. So watch what it says about faith. It says, now faith, and, and I know that, you know, there's some teachers that teach this as present faith. But in the context of the, the verse, it doesn't mean that. Now, literally means but faith. But when they teach us that present faith is this particular thing, it is spiritual insight and understanding that is legitimized by the very word of God. But so that we have biblical integrity, the writer writes it this way. But faith is assurance. When you say that you are a person of faith, you are saying that I am a person who is assured. The person of faith is not a person that is wondering. The person of faith is not a person that is doubting. The person of faith is not a person that is operating in uncertainty. No, um, to have faith is to be sure. Sure there has to do with this idea um, of a support or a steadiness. I am a person that has a support or a steadiness that gives me surety in my personal stance. So the faith person is a person that's sure of the things that they expect. Hope there is not the idea of hope where, you know, people in the world say, I'm hoping that this happens. Biblical hope has to do with assurance. And the assurance that I have is based upon what the Lord has said. So watch the verse again. To have faith is to be certain, to, to, to be so certain that you stand and you base your life on the support and the steadiness of the thing you expect. And the thing that you expect is the thing that he said. Watch where faith begins to go, go left. Faith begins to go left when you come up with your own expectation. True biblical hope is to expect the things that the Father has said and promised through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So true faith is assurance of the things that we expect for. Those things have been spoken and have been given to us by Jesus Christ. And confident in things not Yet seen. Okay, watch what the writer is saying. He says that people of faith, they are people of surety. They're sure because there's something that God has spoken or God has revealed through Jesus Christ. And they now expect it. It is their spiritual hope. And because they expect it, they have a confidence even though it does not appear yet within the physical realm. So there's some things I expect that have not yet arrived. But it does not change my expectation. I stand sure in the midst of the absence of the thing because he promised it and that sells it. Amen. Okay, faith requires that you get a word from the Lord and that you stand in a surety so strong that you begin to live your life with expectation for it because you know the nature of your God. He can't lie. So it didn't show up yesterday, but today I'm looking. If it don't show up on today, on tomorrow, I'm looking. Why? Because I'm sure that if he said it, it's got to manifest, it's got to happen, and I expect it, and I'm sure it's going to happen. And so even in the absence of the thing, it does not change the attitude of my heart. I heard with the ear of my heart. Now, the attitude of my heart is that I expect it. Yes. 
Hebrews 11.3. Hebrews 11.3, let's go down two verses. It says this. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Everybody see that? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Powerful, powerful verse. But watch the, the heart of the verse. It's right there in the first four words. Through faith we understand. It's right here that, that the writer is helping us to understand the importance of our, our faith walk, our faith stance, and our attitude of faith. Your faith allows you to tap into greater understanding. But when you operate in a lack of faith, your lack of faith now restricts you to a lack of understanding. I need you to grab what I'm saying in here on today. I want to get up and I want to just shout right now. I, I need for you to understand that when you are a person of faith, it removes the veil. It removes the prison. It removes the cage that you were once imprisoned in. Your understanding now is no longer in prison and now you're able to tap into new dimensions of understanding. The writer helps us to understand that through faith we understand. He's trying to help us to understand that a mindset of faith grants us access into divine revelation. When you have a mindset of faith, that mindset of faith now allows you to tap into greater dimensions of divine revelation. It is something that is revealed of God and by God. My faith allows me now to connect to the mind of God and God is able now to reveal things to me that did not originate in my mind. They originated in his mind and he transferred them to my mind. Oh, hallelujah. Um, and so right here, this means that faith walks us into the operations of God, the ways of God, the methods of God. And the very mind of God itself. But if I don't have a faith walk, then I'm limited to the degrees that I can walk into because my logic will fight against things that are greater than its ability to perceive. And the heart of what the writer is trying to help us to understand is that when you have a faith life that is intact, faith will usher you into greater understandings. Now, notice how he, he words it here just so that you can understand it a little better. He says, faith, it, um, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He's taking us back to the Genesis account where it says that God moved upon the face of the deep and God said and there was. And God said and there was. And God said and there was. And God said is taking us back to the point of how God created all things. Question, were you there? Question, was the writer of Hebrews there? There's some things that God did before we were. But if you can operate in a mind of faith, God then can, can reach out and grab you and pull you into a dimension that reveals to you his methods, his ways, and his mind on the matter. Your faith allows you to access God. And when you access God, God begins to communicate to you some things that are beyond your knowing that come from his knowing. So it says, through faith we understand. Through faith we understand. Everybody say that with me. Through faith, I understand. Okay. And so um, these three verses give us some principles regarding our faith walk and the importance of that faith walk. That faith comes by hearing for those of us. That's the hearing from the ear of my heart. Um, the rhema of the word of God if I'm trying to increase my faith. Um, Hebrews 11.1 1 reminded us that, that to have faith is to be sure of everything that God speaks even when you don't see it in the physical. And the last Hebrew 11.3 um, helps us to understand that we 
operate in a greater level of understanding, we come into divine levels of understanding regarding the ways, methods, and the mind of God when we operate with the mind of faith. Now, there are two final verses I want to give you that, that ties all of this up um, for us in our, learn, in, our, in our time of learning on today. Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, there you find the account of the Roman officer. Matthew chapter 8. It is this Roman officer that was the greatest level of faith that we studied um, on Tuesday, Tuesday in our time of study in Bible study. Beginning at chapter 8, beginning at verse 5, it says this. It says, when Jesus entered into Capernaum, a Roman officer met him and begged for help. Sir, my servant is sick in bed at home, unable to move and suffering terribly. I will go and make him well, Jesus said. Oh, no, sir, answered the officer. I don't deserve for you to come into my house. Just give the order and my servant will get well. I, too, am a man under authority of superior officers. And I have soldiers under me. I order this one go, and he goes. And I order that one come, and he comes. And I order my slaves do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was surprised and said to the people following him, I tell you, I have never found anyone in Israel with faith like this. I assure you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But those who should be in the kingdom will be thrown out into darkness where they will cry and gash their teeth. Then Jesus said to the officer, go home and what you believed will be done for you. Okay, okay, all right. All right, right here, I want you to, to look at verse 8 and 9 again with me because right there, um, we're, we're, we're learning something that we need to grab. In, in 8, it says, Oh, no, sir, answered the officer. I don't deserve to have you come in my house. Just give the order, and my servant will be healed. Why? Because I'm a man under authority. I tell people to go, they go. I tell people to come, they come. I tell my servant, do this, and my servant does exactly what I say. So I understand authority. Now, remember I said to you that faith gives you the capacity to tap into greater understanding. It was, the, it was this soldier's faith that gave him the ability to tap into a deeper understanding that many people around Jesus never tapped into. Watch it. His faith caused him to say this. Your spiritual authority is not limited to the place of your physical presence. He says, I understand by faith that even though you're here, you can dispatch your glory, your power, and your authority anywhere you want to while you're in this present place. Because your power is not limited to your place. It was his faith that allowed him to tap and tap to that revelation. His faith took natural things and understood natural things in a supernatural context. He says, I understand that you have been authorized by God himself. And because you have been authorized by God himself, I understand how natural things work. In the natural, I've been authorized by the emperor. And because I've been authorized by a higher authority, my word carries weight. Now, if that can be so in the natural, I know it has to be even more so in the spirit. And so his faith caused him to get an understanding that no Pharisee ever taught him. Through faith, he came into a divine awareness 
that the authority of God is not limited to a singular place. Amen. Because God is all places yes. at all times. So just say the word and my servant will be healed. Okay. He's showing us that we've got to begin to operate at a level of faith that causes us to understand that there's really no limits to the authority of God's power. That his power is handcuffed to his word. And whatever he says, his word has the power to fulfill. He says, I understand that if you say it my servant will be healed. You ain't got to go there. Okay, watch the last verse I want to live in your hearing. Matthew 15, chapter 15. All right. Verse um, 21. Chapter 15, verse 21. It says, <laughs> Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the city of Tyrean and Salem. Verse 22, a Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him, son of David. She cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, Send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. And Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this, the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, it isn't right for me to take the children's food and throw it to dogs. That's true, sir, she answered. But even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from the master's table. So Jesus answered her, you are a woman with great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. Okay, watch, watch this particular verse. Remember that Hebrews told us that, that if we have faith, faith takes us into deeper understandings. It's this woman's faith of who Jesus Christ is that teaches her that even though you don't qualify, he will make an exception. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Thank you. Her faith teaches her of Jesus Christ that no, it's not lawful for him to do it. No, you don't meet the requirements of the assignment that he has been dispatched to operate in. But her faith says, but look at his nature. His nature is he will make an exception for you. It's right here that this woman's faith is teaching her that the heart of the father is prone to handouts. That there's some stuff that the father does not because you deserved it. Not because you earned it. Not because you measure up. Or not because you were even in his plan. Yeah, I that there's some stuff that the father does because his heart is prone to handouts. And your faith has to be so intact that you understand that I know by faith his nature. This lady's faith is teaching her that his grace allows him to move in the gray areas of divine agenda. That the divine agenda can be one thing, but on his way to do whatever he had purpose to do, that when he runs across stuff, even though it was not what he had purpose to do, he makes time to do on the way to what he purposed to do. I need you to catch that because Jesus makes it clear. I have not been assigned except to Israel. I'm not assigned to the Gentiles. And you are not of the blood of Israel. So I can't help you because it's not right to give what belongs to the chosen people of God to dogs. 
woman's faith says, I get all of that. Yeah. But even dogs qualify to get the drums, the crumbs. Now, now catch it again. This woman takes natural things and by faith gets a supernatural understanding of the workings of God. Your faith will allow you to see natural realities and get a revelation for the supernatural operation of God. But that doesn't come until you get the mind of faith. By faith we understand. And there's some stuff that you've got to begin to understand through faith if you're going to access the power and the grace of God at the next level. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, good Jesus. It's good to me. He, he declares, um, she declares to us in her example again that his grace allows him to, to move in the great areas of his agenda. Just so that I can prove it to you real quick, let's go to Matthew chapter 5 and we'll end right there. I'm sorry, um, Mark chapter 5 and we'll end there. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, I'm going to begin reading at verse 21. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. There you find these words, it says, um, well, I, I'll, I'll give you the key verse that we're going to be focusing on first. Um, look at verse 29. It's talking about the woman with the issue of blood. We've covered that. Um, but this is woman that has been bleeding for literally 12 years. She couldn't get her cycle um, in order. And so she has an irregular cycle. And literally, her cycle is lasting for the period of 12 years. She's lost blood, which means she's lost life. Not only has she lost blood, lost life, um, but she's also lost all of her resources trying to correct the problem um, by going to doctors. But look at this, verse 29. It says, she touched his cloak. That's the cloak of Jesus Christ. She touched his cloak, and her bleeding stopped at once. And she had the feeling inside her that she was healed of her terrible bleeding. Verse 30, at once Jesus knew that power had gone out of him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, you see how many people are crowding you? Why are you asking who touched you? Here's what they're saying, everybody's touching you. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Because he's looking for the touch that was done in faith. Yeah. Everybody's touching me, but everybody's not touching me in faith. There's a particular touch that was operating in faith. So he kept looking around to see who had done it. And she realized what had happened to her. And she came trembling with fear kneeling at his feet and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, my daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your troubles. Now, we hear about that and we, we preach about it, we squall about it, and nah, you gotta push through the crowd, and if you can push through the crowd and touch the hill of his garment, you can be healed. Y'all like that, don't you? Okay. Watch this. We preach that, but we miss the context. Here's the context beginning at verse 21. Jesus went back across to the other side of the lake. There at the lakeside, a great crowd gathered around him. Jairus, an officer, of a local synagogue arrived, and when he saw Jesus, he threw himself down at his feet and begged him earnestly, my little girl is very sick, please come and place your hands on her so that she can get well and live. Jesus started off to him. So many people were going along with Jesus. Jesus started off with him, and so many people were going along with Jesus that they were crowding him from every side. Mm -hmm. Then, the woman suffering with terrible bleeding for 12 years said to herself, if I can touch the heel of his garments, I can be well. Yeah. Okay. I'm giving you this just to push my point. Jesus doesn't have this woman in mind. Mm -hmm. Jesus has committed himself to the assignment of healing Jairus' 
an officer of the synagogue's daughter. He's on his way to heal the daughter. But while he's on the way, somebody who dared to have faith interrupted the agenda. And they say, I know that you're on assignment. I know that you're going somewhere else. I know that you got somebody else in mind. But my faith causes me to believe that if I can just touch you, that even though I'm not your assignment, even though I'm not what you had on your mind, that you will give me a hand out. That you will meet me in the gray areas of your move. Because your heart is so full of grace that is looking for opportunity to give a blessing wherever you can give a blessing. But we understand this by faith. We understand by faith. And so there's a level of faith that you got to operate in that begins to produce a new level of understanding. Listen, don't allow your mind to be crippled by the logic of this world. There is a logic that comes from heaven that supersedes the logic of this world. I mean, scientifically, it's already proven that a bumblebee should not be able to fly. They say all of the laws of science suggest that it is absolutely impossible for the bumblebee to fly. Why, Pastor? Because his body is too big for the little wings that he has. But by faith, the bumblebee says, I was created to fly. And even though his makeup defies all scientific law, he still flies. Because he has faith in his creator. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that as you're walking through life, you got to walk through life as somebody that doesn't just have a theory of faith. you got to literally walk by faith and be like the bumblebee and say that I believe what my creator says. Despite the fact that life says it's impossible, despite whoever is my naysayer, if God said it, I believe it and I'm going to walk in it. And so in this time of our faith talk, I'm hoping that I'm stirring your faith up and causing you to, you to understand that there's a faith that all of us are called to walk in as people of faith. And it should be natural to us. That faith should usher us into new understandings through the revelation of God for the different times that we deal with. Listen, we are dealing with a new normal. I said this to our leaders um, before we started service. We're dealing with a new normal. All of this talk about this going away. No. It's here. And we're going to have to learn how to operate in a faith that allows God to, 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 to give us new levels of understanding. So that we know how to move, when to move. Um, in, in the revelation of God. And it's through your faith that you're able to access that level of understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to speak and to share the words with these your people. Father, all of us open our hearts to greater levels of faith. We thank you for the faith, the measure of faith that you've already given us. But God, our desire is to work our faith so that it can become a much greater faith and yield to you the glory that you so deserve. Now, Father, I bind every voice that seeks to sabotage the faith walk of your people. Every negative voice, whether it's personal or whether, God, it's those that we share space with. Father, we decree victory over sabotaging voices that desire to deceive, God, the life that you designed us to have and to walk in. And so, Father, allow an overflow of faith to take place in our lives and in our community of faith in this season. It is all of these things we pray now in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Did you all get that on today? <laughs> Hallelujah.